Good evening. Good evening. And welcome to the Lord's house. Today we are, actually this weekend we're actually celebrating a special Sunday focused on Jesus Cares Ministries, a very ministry that you are involved in here, but also maybe a little bit broader, also the Lutheran Home Association and, and Jesus Cares Ministry, not just are here, but you're connected to other congregations as well. My name is Patrick Feldes. I am pastor and chaplain at Hope Residence in Belle Plaine, Minnesota for the Lutheran Home Association and also High Island Creek Residence of Arlington, Minnesota. And those are the areas of the Lutheran Home that deal specifically with individuals with special needs. A lot of times when people think the Lutheran Home, they think senior care, nurse care, which primarily what we do, but we also take care of people, individuals with special needs. And uh, that was my primary job, to care for their souls as pastor there. So I have the opportunity to share uh, God's word with these special people every, almost every day. I have devotions in the morning, Bible studies with them. And then on Wednesdays, I have our special worship at the cross so that they can uh, worship in their own unique kind of way. So Jesus Cares Ministry it assists congregations in reaching out to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, their families, and communities. Uh, one thing you'll, you'll notice about the, the Jesus Cares is we understand, yes, our target is people with special needs, but they're never alone. They are usually with people who take care of them, so they're caregivers, or they have their families that are so much involved in their lives. And one thing that people don't maybe realize is just how much impact it has on the people they take care of, uh, take care of them, and their families. Uh, there's a lot of isolation. And so uh, we want to make sure we are able to reach out to them with God's love and the people they're connected to. They need to hear it just as much as the rest of us, that Christ loved them and died for them. And that's really the unique thing about Jesus Cares Ministry. So Jesus Cares Ministry has three areas that we focus on, kind of mimicking the life of a congregation. Uh, the three areas of life in your congregation, and just like Jesus Cares Ministry, one is fellowship. And so we have a program called New Friends, and that is basically uh, teaching our young men and women, whether they're in the college years or their high school years, to learn how to be a friend to people with special needs. And so this is more of a fellowship fun time where we get together people with special needs and teenagers and young adults, and they just get together and have fun. Uh, we have a new friends program out of New Alm at MLC, and they get together monthly during the school year. And one of the cool things, in just a couple weeks, Mariah and I are actually gonna be up in New Alm, and they're gonna have their special new friends activity, karaoke, and they get over 100 people with special needs coming on campus to sing songs. Uh, usually there will be a, de a devotion at the beginning, but just have fun. And it's building those relationships, and that's really what the focus of these friends is, just like our fellowship. We want to build our relationship in Christ. Other aspect of uh, Jesus Cares is Bible study, and that's primarily what you do here. Uh, so Bible study is kind of unique. We have the story, but we also recognize our friends with special needs kind of need it really in course. So there's the story, then they uh, sometimes act it out, and sometimes they also connect a snack to it, uh, feeding of the 5,000, maybe they'll have some bread or something like that, just to reinforce what they've learned. Uh, and then they, they also have a Bible bingo, uh, games that go along with the story. So not only are they hearing the story, but they're interacting with the story, they're actually uh, maybe even participating with physically acting it out. And then they're playing games and having snacks. So all these different ways to getting their body and all the different areas of their body involved in learning is very important for people with special needs. And it's actually important, very important for us as well. Uh, we learn better as we use different parts of our bodies, our senses, right? Whether it's touch or sight or hearing or whatever it is. And then just re, uh, a lot of re repetition is very important with people with special needs. Uh, and, and aiding their learning. So that's our, our Bible study, and that's primarily what you do here, but you also have worship at the cross, and that's the third aspect of Jesus Cares Ministry. Oops. We have a mentor program, so we're connecting families together. Again, I talked about that isolation, uh, families that have 
children with special needs, and um, sometimes even the siblings, if they're typical, feel a little bit isolated. And so we want to make sure they know they're not alone. There are other people out there. Uh, so we have mentor programs. And we also work a lot with, uh, with uh, people and connecting them. It can be all across the United States. Mm -hmm. Best thing about technology, right? Uh, we're never too far from each other. We also have a digital, uh, this is kind of interesting what happened. Uh, 2019, we decided, you know, we are only barely scratching the surface with people with special needs. Uh, because a lot of times, they might be sick, or they're not able to come to the physical program. So we are thinking about, well, how can we reach them as well? Well, why don't we start thinking about putting things online? Facebook, Facebook Live, and that way it's recorded, and that they can re-watch whatever program or thing that they have, and they can keep watching it as much as they want. So we started working on getting in the aspect of online presence, and we are finally ready to launch our online digital stuff in uh, March 2020. Does anybody know what happened at that time? Yeah, COVID. <laughs> That's when everything shut down, all the churches were empty, everything was empty. And uh, that was the year that we actually started, and we were already ready to go. So we were actually lined up in, in perfect timing. So we have uh, now online, if you go to Jesus Cares Ministry Facebook or our uh, YouTube channel, you can see three year, almost three years' worth of worship at the crosses, Bible studies. Uh, we even did a virtual camp that uh, is on there, and people can watch it. And I know my daughter loves to re-watch those things, especially camp, because she loves camp songs. And so she, she'll watch that every so often. And it's online, so it's always going to be there. We also are in, oops, too far. There we go. We also are international. It's kind of we partner with Kingdom Workers, uh, and we started going out to Malawi about uh, almost ten years ago. And uh, one thing maybe you don't understand about how certain parts of the world view people with special needs in Africa, they view people with special needs as either demon possessed or cursed, and that can rub off on you. So you can imagine if you find someone with special needs and you think they're demon possessed or cursed. How do you think you're going to treat them? Pretty poorly. There's, it's not uncommon to uh, have a family who find out their child is born with some special needs to take a trip out to the woods and leave them there. Uh, or send them out to the, live with the pigs in the pen. Or the sheep in the pen. Uh, because they don't want them in their house. Uh, so our brothers and sisters in Malawi recognize, boy, there's such a great need here. And so they partnered with uh, Kingdom Workers and Jesus Cares, and we brought it over there. And just a couple, about a year and a half ago, uh, 2021, at the beginning of January 2021, we got a call from Grenada, and they recognized that there's this huge uh, opportunity with the orphanages in Grenada, and the, specifically the or orphanages that have a lot of special needs individuals. And so they asked for our help, and we were able to, again, Blessings of technology send a lot of our information and help through the internet. Uh, we haven't been able to physically go there because of COVID, but now things are opening up. Um, my partner, uh, Joel, Pastor Joel Gettner, is planning on going both over to uh, Malawi and Grenada this next year. So, Lord willing, there will be an open door for that, and he'll be able to join them and encourage them and help them out as much as he can. Now, we're going to get to our third aspect, and that is worship. And that's what we are going to do today. So worship at the cross, a little few things before we start. It's a special service. It's based off of service of the word in the red hymnal. We haven't gotten over to the blue hymnal yet, or the new blue hymnal. If you're old enough to know the old blue hymnal. Well, it's based off of service of the word. And so the structure of the service is it's going to be familiar. But it's going to be presented in a way that's geared for people with special needs. So there's going to be quick, short sentences the point, and it's going to be a lot of repetition. So you'll notice right away that our, there's not three lessons, there's just one Bible, Bible verse, and it's actually just a part of a verse. Uh, people with special needs tend to have a hard time grasping how big sections connect, and so they get lost and confused, and they don't really grasp it, so we try to keep it to a point, and just repeat this, and that will be seen throughout this service. Uh, we also... 
recognize that it's hard for them to sometimes read. So there's going to be lots of pictures. That way, even if they can't read, they can get the idea of what's going on just by looking at the pictures. And you probably already noticed, you probably feel a little bit weird, no bulletin. There's a reason. Some of our friends with special needs can't hold bulletins, or maybe get lost in a bulletin, a hymnal, and a psalter, and in this and that. And there's so many things. That, well, where am I supposed to hold, and where am I supposed to go? And they're lost in what they're touching rather than what we're doing. So that's why everything is on the screen. So that way they can just focus their attention in one spot. Uh, and that way it helps them through the service. Uh, we also receive instruments. You might be wondering, oh, why, what, what's this all about? Some of our special needs friends can't sing or speak, but they can hold an instrument and they can play their music that way. My daughter is that way. She's nonverbal. She makes a lot of noises, but she can't sing normally, but she loves to play her instrument. And she, they get really involved in that, and then it's pretty special to see them worship in their own unique way. And so that's why I just opening it up and getting that everybody involved. And this is a very interactive service. So when I ask a question, I actually want you to answer it. And when I'm lighting a candle and doing the bell, you are actually part of the service. Again, uh, showing our friends with special needs that they are part of what we're doing here. And that's why, if you also notice, I made a make makeshift altar on the floor. Because our, some of our friends have a hard time going upstairs. And so that way it helps them be able to interact. Uh, a lot of times I would have them come up and ring the bell or do the lighting of the candle get them involved, and uh, so that's kind of why there's an altar kind of made down below. That way it's accessible to them. Where if I left it up on the altar, and if someone was unable to navigate the steps, they wouldn't be able to participate. So just looking at ways to remove those barriers and obstacles from people to worship the Lord. And the service, you might be ner nervous, that, hey, we haven't even started. It's only 15 minutes late. This is a very short service. And it's because our friends with special needs have a hard time keeping their attention. And so normally, when I do this service with my uh, at Hope Residence or High Island, it's 15, 20 minutes. And that's it. Uh, so here, I try not to go too long. It's going to go longer today because I'm doing a lot of explanations. Uh, but just so you understand this, I always start late for a reason. Sometimes our friends with special needs, they don't come on time. And that's okay. We go with what they're, how they're doing and what they're doing and at their time. You learn to be very flexible. I know I'm not very flexible in myself because I like to be. But I've learned over the years you have to roll with it sometimes because they're important enough to we'll wait. If they have to go to the bathroom, they get here, they have to go to the bathroom, let them go to the bathroom, we'll start when they get, get back. It's okay. Uh, I'll also explain as things go on what's going, uh, what we're doing, but uh, I think that's a preliminary thing, so we'll start. So with that in mind, we start worship at the cross. So the service begins. We worship at the cross, because on a cross, Jesus got rid of all the bad things we do. We light a candle to remind us that Jesus is always with us. Who would like to light the candle? We want to light the candle. We can't start until the light of the candle. So we'll oh, be here a while if no one wants to participate. All right. Here, I'll bring it to you since you're... Oh, that's okay. I think you can handle it. Flip the switch. I get a little nervous with real candles, <laughs> as you can imagine. And we light... We ring a bell... To remind us it's time to listen to God's word, to sing to God, and pray to him together. So just like our normal service, we have candles and we have a bell. So who would like to ring the bell? You know, we can't start until the bells ring. <laughs> All right, don't be shy. Very good, thank you. Our Bible verse for today is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 8. And you can read along with me if you'd like. 
See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. So we'll sing our first song. If you have an instrument, you can go ahead and grab it. Uh, we're singing Jesus Cares and Loves Me Too. This is a special song that's part of your Jesus Cares ministry here. And so we're going to sing three verses of that after an introduction. Again, our Bible passage from Revelation chapter 3. You can read along with me if you'd like. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. So just like in our worship, we are reminded of our baptism. We worship God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say amen together. Amen. Amen. Technology, like I said, it's a blessing, and for some reason, it doesn't always want to work. Keep cl- clicking. That's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. There we go. <coughs> Next slide. There we go. And just like our worship, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, come and be with us today. Bless our worship. Give us understanding as we listen to your word. Give us joy as we sing to your glory. Give us peace as we bring our prayers to you. We ask this in Jesus' name, and we say amen together. Amen. Amen. Next. Dear children of God, our God is holy. He does not sin. Our God is holy. He does not want us to sin. We are sinners. We do what God tells us not to do, and we fail to do what God tells us to do. Let us tell God that we have sinned with these words. God, I have sinned, and say it with me. God, I have sinned. Next. Let us tell God that we are sorry we have sinned with these words. God, I am sorry, and say it with me. God, I am sorry. Next. Jesus died on the cross instead of you. Jesus' death pays for your sins. You can be certain these words are true when you say, Jesus died for me, and say it with me. Jesus died for me. Next. Through faith in Jesus, God forgives all your sins. Let us tell the good news in this way. God forgives me. Say it with me. God God forgives me. me. Oh, look. There's a difference in the picture, right? Before, we saw someone bow down and sorry, right? Humbled by sin. But things have changed. Now we have a victory, right? And what's the difference? We're forgiven, right? So... Let's say together, thank you, God, for taking away my sins. Next slide. There we go. Thank you, God, for taking away my sins. As forgiven children of God, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now we know that we have forgiveness for all our sins. Now we know that we are your people. Now we know that we will live with you in heaven someday. And we say amen together. 
Amen. Again, our Bible passage from Revelation chapter 3. You can read along with me if you'd like. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. All right, you can pick up your instruments and we'll sing our next song. God loves me dearly, two verses. We'll have an introduction and we'll sing. for you. I just want you to uh, take a look at these and see if they have anything in common. Next slide. That's a nice looking door, huh? Next. 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 I like this one. You can see a cross in it. Next. Next. This reminds me of the church I vicared in, in Racine. Old, old building with the stone there. Uh, is anybody getting what it might be that they have in connection? Uh, they are in common. They're all doors. They're all doors and they're all closed. closed. Next. Oops. What's different? It's open. So even if you can't read and you're, you're, it's hard to grasp these things, but when you look at these pictures, you get the concept. All those other doors are shut, 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 and then, okay. Then all of a sudden, something's different. With this door, it's open. And next, that's what this Bible passage is talking about. This is Jesus speaking in Revelation chapter 3. He is our king. That's what today would have been a celebration. This is Christ the King Sunday. So our king says, See, I have placed before you, what kind of door? Open, Open door that no one can shut. Now, what, is, what door do you suppose he's talking about? The door to heaven. Yeah, the door to heaven, very good. So, I have a question for you. Who told you about Christ your king who opened the door to heaven? How do you know about it? Who told you? Mom? Mom? Who else? Pastors. Pastors, sure. Anybody else? Sunday school teachers, absolutely. Who else told you about that open door that Jesus, our King, has opened that no one can shut? Okay, our LES school teachers. Say it again. Okay, school te teachers, yep. The Bible itself, yep. Some have grandparents that have taught them. Uh, my grandparents have been very influential on me. Parents, yeah. So we have been very blessed. And think about Thanksgiving coming up. What a great reminder for us to be thankful for all those blessings in our life of people who taught us about what King Jesus did. That he opened a door to heaven itself that no one can shut. And that's really important for us to hold on to, and that's where our comfort is, especially when we consider what he said right before this. He says, I know what you have done. That's the very words that he said right before this. Now, 
Does that fill you with happiness and joy when Jesus says, I know what you have done? What does it make you feel when Jesus says, I know everything you've done? What's that? Sad. Sad? Why? why? You know what you've done. <laughs> when do you ever hear those words, I know what you did? Who's ever said that to you before? I know where I've heard it. Mom and Dad. And what usually came about when they said, I know what you did? Usually means I'm in deep trouble. They know something I did wrong. And so when Jesus, our king, says, I know what you have done, it fills us with dread and makes us scared of God. Because as king, he does know everything. As the Lord of lords and king of kings, he knows exactly what you've done throughout your life. And some of us have been around for a long time, and he knew what you did when you were 12. He knew what you did when you were 17. He knows what you did when you were 80. He knows what you'll do tomorrow. It fills us with dread because of the sin that we talked about earlier in our service. The very one that we, con- we confess. And that is why it really is remarkable that Jesus would follow up the words, I know what you have done, with this. Look, see, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. That really demonstrates the love our king has for us, that he was willing to do something even though he knew everything you did. And not only that, as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, he even knows everything that you thought. That's how remarkable our King's love is for us. How do we know that he loved us so much? What did he do? He died on the cross. Think about that. I know everything you've done. I know even what you thought. And I still die for you. That is a remarkable love that God has for us. That our king has for us. That he was willing to step into a battle against sin and death on the cross. So that we, even after all the things we've ever done and haven't done right, would be able to go through that open door. Again, you have been very blessed. And you, that's why you keep coming back here, isn't it? Isn't that why you keep coming back to hear that from your pastor? Why you want to take and bring your children into your school, and your Sunday school, so that you can continue to hear about King Jesus and the love that he has for you, so that you never forget. I have placed before you an open door to heaven, and notice, no one can shut. Not Satan, not this world, and not even your own sin. That's how much... King Jesus loves you. Now let's bring it to our friends with special needs. I have a number for you, eight million. Pretty large number, right? Imagine if you had eight million dollars. Oh, I can do whatever I want. But that's not dollars. Eight million individuals and their families do not feel welcome at church. And you might be thinking, how is that possible? If there's going to be one place on earth that they should be absolutely welcomed with open arms would be a church, God's house. My wife and I, uh, as a, when I was a former pastor in, in Cornell, Wisconsin, we, we took a, kind of a, 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 a couple of days to go out and be with a couple other families that had children with special needs. And out of the 10, fam- ten couples, we were the only ones that were welcomed or felt welcomed. Well, I had a leg up. I had a pastor there. Of course they're going to welcome me and my family. But all the other families told stories. And maybe it wasn't verbally said, but our friends with special needs don't always interact and act the way that we normal people think they should. And so guess what happens? They're at church, and something happens. And they make a weird noise, and you hear, see this, like, who's, who's ruining my worship? What are you doing here? It's that face, that look, that turn. And it doesn't have to be people with special needs. It could be a young family with a child that's just making loud noises. They get that look. And what does that look tell them? What are you doing here? You're ruining my worship. You may not have even thought that. 
But just that look. And, oh, I can remember there's been looks I've had when I was younger. Now who's making all that noise back there? Can't they control them? It's a sad situation, but it happens more than we would like to admit. Make people feel unwelcome. Doesn't matter if they had special needs or not. It's a tragedy. Because we're basically making the impression that Jesus, because we kind of represent Jesus here on earth, that Jesus says to them when we give them that look, oh, that door I talked about, bam, in your face. I don't want you here because you make noises, you drool, you, you name it. They feel as if the door to heaven has been slammed in their face. They're not welcome. God forbid that we've ever done that. But thanks be to God, there's forgiveness for that too. Jesus died for us and for those attitudes that we may have had in our past or maybe more than we have ever, or we hope we ever would do. But they need to hear, they need to be welcomed because they are just as sinful as you and me. Uh, again, back in Cornell when I was pastor, my wife worked at a group home and they became comfortable coming to church. And <laughs> it just so happened that it was a Sunday I was teaching, uh, preaching on the Sixth Commandment. You know, it's just one of those things. It comes up in time. And I'm not going to shy away from it. So I, I remember saying this. And Jesus even said, if you look with lust with, uh, to a woman who's not your spouse, you have committed adultery with her. And one of the gentlemen with special needs goes, uh-oh. <laughs> Very loudly. I guarantee he's probably never touched a woman in his life. The lust, he recognized it. He was just as sinful as the rest of us. They know when they say bad words. They know when they get angry because they're not getting their favorite candy or their favorite soda. They know they get angry. They know they're sinful. That's why it's so very important for them to be blessed as you have been blessed. With someone in their lives willing to say, look, your king opened the door that no one can shut. And that's really a unique thing about Jesus Cares. We let them be who they are. Will they come late? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's okay. There's nothing in the scriptures to say you have to be at uh, church at uh, 5.30 exactly or you're going to be uh, missing out. <laughs> We go with what they, how they are doing. And sometimes if they can't come to us, we go to them. And that's okay too. We find ways to break down that barrier that they don't feel welcome. By being friendly. Instead of that look, smile. Say, I'm happy you're here. I see that you enjoyed that song, Mariah. You're really, really singing very lovely. But it's ways to be pleasant to them in a way that shows this is for you too. Not just for me. I'm no different than you are. We all need this open door. And when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't just for me, it was for you too. That's the best part of this message. It's inclusive. You cannot find a more inclusive message when Jesus says, I have died for the sins of every single person. And that's the mission that you are in as part of Jesus Cares here, but also wherever you go. It's not just a Jesus Cares mission. It's our mission as believers. It's the Great Commission. Go into all the world and tell the good news. That starts in your home. Maybe you can think of some uh, people in your own family that might have autism. You can be a blessing to them. Or maybe it's some other special need. Or maybe it's just your neighbor next door. Be a blessing that someone was to you. And go tell them the good news. That this is, there's a door that Jesus opened that no one can shut. And be confident in what you say. Because there's one more door I'd like to, uh, you to look at. Next slide. Where? Where's our confidence? What's this door? Jesus is still alive. Our king reigns. Our king is not dead. 
He is still ruling over all things for our good. Christ is still king and he will reign forever. He's alive. That's what gives our message power. That's what gives us confidence. Because not even death can separate us from our king. That door to heaven is open. And Jesus backs it up by opening his grave. And so when we talk to our friends with special needs, we can confidently say to them, your king has opened a door that no one can open, shut. You will live forever. No one can shut it. Not even Satan, the world, your own sin, and not even your disability. Because Jesus, our king, lives. He will come again and bring us through that open door. My friends, that's the message that you get to partake and share. How awesome is that? You don't have to be a pastor to share this. That's something that we can tell anyone at any time. Because Jesus gives us that confidence. Amen. Next slide. So just at, like after our own, after the sermon, we go into the creed. But it's going to be done in a little different way. So our friends with special needs, again, have a hard time with long, drawn-out things. So I'll actually speak the creed, but we'll shorten it down to one sentence that they will speak. And then in, their, uh, in between each of the articles, we'll sing, Father, I adore you, Son, I adore you, Spirit, I adore you, as a response. Okay, next slide. So we, uh, next, let us respond to God's word by telling everyone what we believe about God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We tell everyone that we believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, with these words. I believe in God the Father. And say it with me. I believe in God the Father. Okay? We'll sing our next song, and we'll have an introduction, and we'll sing. Okay, let's sing. Christ our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We tell everyone we believe this with these words. I believe in Jesus Christ and say it with me. I believe in Jesus Christ. Second verse, ready? Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We tell everyone we believe this with these words. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And say it with me. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Okay, third verse. Here we go. Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. One more time. Our Bible passage from Revelation chapter 3. You can read along with me. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And so, our, just like in our typical worship, we have an offering. So, you might be wondering, uh, don't you think you're going to make them feel bad? I mean, people with special needs don't really have much money. and Yeah, we know that. Does God care about how much you give? No. He cares about your heart. So even though they don't have much physically, they want to give something. So we give them an opportunity. It could be that they give a dollar. It could be that they give a couple cents. It doesn't really matter because, again, God doesn't need our money. He wants our heart. And so I hope that when you give your offering, you're thinking, this is how I respond to what our king has done. And it's not about the money. It's not about the amount. 
about the heart that's been set free and will go through that open door that our King has opened that no one can shut. So with that in mind, we'll take our offering. Next slide. We are also uh, asking, our ministry is dependent upon members. We do not get money from the Synod. Uh, so we ask that um, people, if they like, uh, they can help become a partner in Jesus Care. And maybe it's uh, $25 or $50, or $100, 400 but you can see how each of those things can help this ministry go out into the world. Like I said, this is not just a United States thing or a wealth thing. It goes all over the world. Uh, so if you're so inclined to do so, you can check out our website, Jesus Cares Ministries, and set up a, a, a partnership with us. And at this time, during the offering, we'll also watch our Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Certainly staying close to our Savior through his gospel and word and sacraments is vital for all of us. But there are certain groups of people for whom that's harder to do in a traditional way. For those groups, Wells has various special ministries to keep them connected to Jesus, including to our brothers and sisters in the military. In a family where dad's deployment bags have been packed and ready to go for months, just in case, things can sometimes be uncertain and uneasy. Deployments are now much more contingency focused as we take a look at what's going on in the news with various countries around the world. Because for this Wells family just outside of Savannah, Georgia, dad could be sent overseas for months or even a year at a moment's notice forcing him to miss birthdays, holidays. He's even had to miss the birth of one of his children. There's been a lot of conversations with the kids because it changes daily, you know? Um, so just kind of being ready for anything. Michael Hefty has served in the United States Army for the last 16 years. Over that span of time, he's been deployed four times and assigned to 10 different duty stations. Most of those moves happening with his wife and children. There was a period where we moved four years in a row. Each duty station was just a year, and that, that was a little much. At the moment, the Hefty family is blessed with a Wells Church just half an hour away from home, providing regular opportunities to worship the Lord and study his word with fellow believers, as well as strong Christian support during this time of uncertainty. But that hasn't always been the case. We have found personally that there is a big difference between live streaming and being able to meet in person and strengthen each other in the faith uh, through that fellowship and through being able to take communion together in person. And so, thankfully for the Hefties and hundreds of other Wells families in the military stationed at home and abroad, Wells Ministry to the Military offers opportunities for Christian support. Our job, our responsibility to our military uh, families is just be there, just, just to be present, to listen, to reach out and not just assume that everything's okay, uh, especially when someone in the family deploys, that our congregations just rally around those people and, and support them. Wells Ministry to the Military works to provide service members and their families with resources in support of their spiritual welfare. In addition to print materials such as military-themed devotions and prayer booklets, the ministry also provides personal connections, whether that's to a Wells civilian chaplain or to a military contact pastor. And these are pastors that serve in, in congregations that are located near military installations without having that understanding myself from personal experience to know what it's like to be in the military and, and what are the what's the best ways that we can serve them. Um, I think that's just helpful to have those resources and, you know, I don't have to figure it out myself. If a Wells member serving in the military reaches out to their local military contact pastor, there's a chance that the pastor might be able to come on base. 
There is one recruit in, in particular that followed the protocol exactly. And uh, so because of him, he's the one that, that got me on base uh, for, for the, the Lord's Supper. And through that one connection, me being on base that one time, has now opened up the door for me to lead a Lutheran service on base every Sunday. The isolation and other struggles that these families face can make something like a deployment even harder than it already is. And that's where the support of Wells Ministry to the military can be so important. Our pastor took Mike to drop him off because he knew I couldn't do it. Um, things like that, you know, just step, sorry, stepping in to some of those situations. It's really comforting to know that other Christians are supporting the family back home all deployed. It's important when the congregation just steps up and says, how's it going? You know, because sometimes you just need somebody to talk to that can share in your burdens. Without our faith, I, I don't know how our family would continue or our relationship, Katie and I, would continue to stay strong. Uh, and even the conversation with the kids is they sometimes have been um, anxious, uh, very nervous or scared what might happen to dad on a certain deployment or what we might be training for. Uh, and, and I always remind them, like, the Lord's in control. We have comfort in that, and it doesn't matter, and, and God will watch over them afterwards regardless of what decision he makes. Our ministry to the military works hard to develop robust congregational ministry to military members and their families. Our goal is to provide people who protect our nation with the support of church family and called workers who are sensitive to the stresses of military life. You can join this ministry by registering congregational service members at wells.net forward slash refer. service we would go into the prayer of the church but because this is a special next slide a special service that we want them interacting i always open it up to any requests so does anybody have any requests i'm going to pray for our pastor mark tom who received calls to be our lead pastor here so i'll have him in a special prayer any other prayers i can pray for tonight Traveling for Thanksgiving week, okay. Don't see any other hands. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another reminder this week that Jesus as our King has opened a door that no one can shut. We also want to thank you for all the plenty, uh, the plenty, plentiful blessings in our lives through our pastors, our teachers, our parents, grandparents, and all the people who continue to remind us that our sins are forgiven and that door to heaven cannot be shut because Jesus, our King, is the, the one who has opened it. Continue to bless us with pastors and teachers who are faithful to your word and strong, uh, keep us strong in the faith so that we never lose courage and look forward to the day when our King returns victoriously to bring us into that open door. We also ask you to give us opportunities to be also blessing in other people's lives, whether it's our special needs community in our, in our family or in our in near area or at our church, which Jesus cares. Help us look for opportunities to be a blessing to them and keep them uh, in your grace so that they too know that that door is open to heaven because Jesus is the one who opened it. We ask that you be with Pastor Mark Tom, who received the call to be our lead pastor here, continue to bless him and help him look with the uh, with people of his blessings and where he can best serve the kingdom. Uh, if it be a will, lead him to see his gifts being used here and take the call. But if he does not, let him continue to be a blessing to his current call. We also ask that you be with over everyone who is traveling this week for Thanksgiving. 
the effigy keep them safe in their travels and let them uh, enjoy the time with their family and friends and then bring them safely back home. Send your holy angels to guard them in all their ways. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Normally we go right into the Lord's Prayer, and we will, but I want you to uh, maybe not do what you normally do because I am guilty of it as well. And I confess that sometimes I say the Lord's Prayer so quickly, and I'm not even thinking about what I'm saying. So what I'd like you to do, instead of closing your eyes and bowing your head, actually look at the screen as we say the Lord's Prayer, and the pictures are there to remind you, oh yeah, we're praying about this? Okay. It helps slow you down, and just remember what you're saying. So with that in mind, Lord, hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and show you his love. The Lord lead you to live in his peace as his forgiven child. And we say amen together. Amen. One more time, our Bible passage from Revelation chapter 3. You can say it along with me. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. Our service ends. We turn out the candle. Anybody like to turn out our candle tonight? We can't leave until you turn it out. You're my ha captive audience. <laughs> and there you go. I have a resident who actually blows at it when I turn it off, and she thinks it's funny. <laughs> it makes her have fun. And then we ring a bell. Who hasn't rung a bell yet today? You can pick up your instruments, and we'll sing our final song. And if you know the, the uh, things that go with it, you can get your gospel light out. And we'll sing after uh, introduction. Some of the announcements for tonight. So, as I, I had mentioned in a prayer, Pastor Mark Com, he's uh, written a letter, so I'll read that to you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I just wanted to acknowledge the divine call that you issued to me this past week as you look to complete your ministry team with a lead pastor. 
It is always a humbling experience when the Lord allows a pastor to evaluate his ministry and deliberate where he might serve in the kingdom of God. I am grateful for this opportunity to research, think, and pray about where the Lord would have me serve moving forward. Please do reach out to me with any questions, comments, concerns, or uh, encouragements that you might have as I deliberate. May God bless your Thanksgiving celebration and your preparation for our Savior's coming this Advent season. In his service, Pastor Mark Kahn. Uh, so just uh, that. Other announcements. Uh, we have uh, our Thanksgiving Eve, our Thanksgiving service. Wednesday night at 6.30 and then Thursday morning at 9 a.m. And the Lord's Supper will be at full service. And there are also Advent devotional booklets from MLC available in the Narthex. So that way, uh, when Advent starts next week, you'll have those devotions ready for you. Chuck, do you have an announcement? Did it work? There. Green. Let's go. Okay. I'm here to talk about Risen Savior with New School again. And one of the fun things we do is scrap the cash. I don't know what's always so much fun to solve the fire. But it gives you kind of a synopsis of what happened this last year. Uh, we called in about 25,000 pounds of scrap the cash. So my pick weighed between five and 6,000. So that's a lot of lifted. And uh, we raised approximately $2,500 this last year to scrap the cash. Uh, one of the bad things that happened, we started out really great, got $190 a ton for a ton prepared, and then we had seven months that the price went down. So at the end, the price was $40, $45 a ton. Well, that wasn't even worthwhile hauling it in. So much to my price, unlike me, we have a huge pile of stuff sitting in our pasture. And she sits at the kitchen table, looks out at the pasture, and, and she said, I don't look very good off, but what is that? And I said, well, your garden doesn't look very good right now either. <laughs> so anyway, that's not a way of getting bounty points. So anyway, uh, that's where we are right now with scrap of cash. And you also received an insert. i got to get this, this thing up here before I talk to you. So. You also received an insert in the bulletin about a, another challenge gift we have this year. The challenge gift is $6,000 and it will be used 100% match and used to reduce the principal on our loan. Our loan right now in the school building is $116,800. So we've come a long ways in about eight years because we were at $1,300,000 when we started. And I looked back last year, <clears throat> looked back last year, because sometimes you think you're not making any progress. And our loan last year at the same time was $175,000. So it was last year went from $175,000 to $116,000. So hopefully we get this match and a little bit of extra boom to it. We should get under $100,000 by the end of the year. So. Next year, hopefully, we pay it off and you won't have to listen to me stand up here and talk to you. So, okay. And thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, give me a, a shout. Some of you, most of you know what Risen St. Ruth School is. But if you don't, I'd be glad to stand in the back and tell you. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Okay. That was very good. That was 14000 yeah, I think it was 14000 All that money was applied to the loan. So that's, that's been another great blessing for those people that love to golf. I would never raise that much to people fishing for bullets. So, <laughs> anyway, but we do appreciate the people that are golfers. August? Third week in August, get your golf clubs ready. 
I get a lot of golf clubs from you to you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Lord's blessings on the rest of your night, and if you would like to put the instruments in this container so we can use them tomorrow, that would be great.